Hello there, party people. My name is Nick Harvey. I am a character rigger at Groove Jones, and I've decided that uh, I'm gonna do a little tutorial for you guys in Motion Builder. Now, if you want to make scenes or um, or actually take motion capture data and apply it to characters, then this is that program. This is this is what you would be using for that. Now. At first glance, you're probably like, what the, where, what is this crazy program? Well, I'm glad you asked. You came to the right video. Um, so, or in, and how is it set up? Well, this is your main scene. This is your viewer. Now, you can actually switch between looking to here and also uh, looking at this graph editor. Now, I'm going to get in into this a bit more, but this is like your node, e node editor in Maya. Um, and you you go back and forth by pressing Control w Now, now that we're here, let's actually get a character in the scene just so that we can just start talking about stuff. Now, you can see I have this character here uh, called Knight D. Pellegrini or whatever. Well, I got that from Mixamo, and this this is what the character is going to look like. Mixamo is a great place to grab, you know, uh, different characters for your your projects that you're working on. It's it's free. It's you know it's open domain, and they have all these different animations that you can apply to it. So if you're not much of an animator or rigger, this is a great place to take your models in and just have uh, all these different like character animations to work with. And plus, if you're actually a rigger like me, then you can actually use a lot of these different uh, animations for calibration tests so that you can paint weight and stuff. So cool. Uh, now this isn't necessarily a rigging tutorial, this is a motion capture or a motion builder tutorial. So we won't talk as much about rigging, but we're gonna talk about how to use motion builder. So okay. So when you when you bring people in to your scene and animations, you're going to hit this merge button right here. Now this is essentially import. Motion Builder is just kind of weird when it comes to like saying different terms. Like merge is import, where and plotting characters is the same as baking animation. And we'll go into that a bit later. So okay, so merge. Let's get this character into the scene. Now, when you get here, you're mainly showing... You'll mainly see the takes that are associated with this character. Now, I don't want any animation on there. And this isn't really animation. This is probably just a copyright thing that they... Uh, that Mixamo put, put on there. But with every character, you're going to want to apply a namespace. And I'll, I'll show why in a few seconds. So, okay. I'm just going to call this rig... Um, I'll call this guy Wizard Rig. Yeah. Okay. Ah, look at him. So graceful. So mad. His poor eye. It's basically Yamcha, but a wizard. Okay. But that's not important. Now, when you go here, you can you can see that you have all these different nodes. Now. Right here, these are his, you know, his mesh nodes, and down here, they're his skeleton, which is great. And this is what you're primarily gonna need. Now, when you import things, including um, from characters to animations, um, they're all going to have to have a skeleton that's gonna be imported, and the skeleton is most likely going to be named the uh, it, it's going to have nodes that are named the exact same. So, if if you're like editing a character later, um, and let's say you know you're you're editing the animation on this guy, <clears throat> if you're or you're you're putting you know animation on this guy, um, you have to make sure that your your rig um, has the same kind of naming conventions, just just so that Motion Builder can pick it up. And also, you know, a, um, the same amount of of joints 
um, in, um, the same amount of joints so that you can put the character animations together on him. Now, the reason why we do namespaces is you'll have animation um, over here with the same nodes and those will overlap and you don't really want that. So yeah, just make sure that you apply namespace to whatever you import. Now I'm going to drag this onto here. So actually before I do that, this is your asset browser. You have a lot of different things um, that are preset in here and characters is what I mainly use the most when setting up motion capture animation. Now I'm going to drag this character preset on top of one of the joints. It doesn't matter which, it just has to be a joint or, you know, an equivalent. So I'm going to hit characterize and I'm going to do biped and there's a quadruped. And that's cool. If you have if you're motion capturing a dog or or a dragon or a lizard or something then you can use that. And then you have cancel. But we're mainly just going to use biped, which is great. So now you can see, if you come over here to the navigator, or the outliner, um, we're going to want to rename this character. Now, I'm going to call this wizard underscore rig. I like keeping things consistent in uh, how they're named. I, I feel like that's, that's a really good practice. Now, what I want to do also is I'm going to select this and I'm going to go over to our Groups tab. And I'm going to hit Create. Now, think of this as like your Photoshop uh, layers, um, except they're called Groups. Groups are nice because you can actually like turn your character on and off. You can use this pick to you know, not select anything if you don't want to... What was that? No, I should not be able to select that. Whatever the heck that is. <laughs> oh well, whatever. You you s you still uh, can't select uh, the like most of the rig. I think that those are just animation nodes or something. I wouldn't worry about it. But anyways, I'm gonna call this wizard underscore rig, which is great. Now I can turn this on and off if I don't want to see it. And Clicking off of things are kind of a drag <laughs> uh, in here. So, yeah, Motion Builder is just kind of silly like that. But it is what it is. So, okay, so we have our wizard rig and its group. And we have uh, the wizard rig and the characters. And so what you're going to do is you'll double click on this and you'll have all these different kinds of inputs. So before I go any further, let's man, let's get some animation on this dude. Okay. So I'm going to hit merge and then I'm going to hit I'm going to get this magic attack. Let's see. And um well, I guess I guess this is just going to be called what it is, a Mixamo. There you go. Okay, so remember, you're, when you when you merge or import something, you have to apply a namespace. So I'm gonna call this magic underscore attack underscore anon. So I'm gonna bring that in, and you could see, you know, the it it has the same amount of amount of joints and stuff, and also. When you come in here and you want this to be a bit more organized, you can right click, hit auto arrange. Look at that. It's great. But also, you can see when you bring the animation in, it has the same exact names. So, if I didn't put any namespace on either of them, the animation would have merged with the character. And that's not what we want because I'm going to put like several different animations on this character. Now, if we go to the asset browser, I'm going to apply a character to this cuz I want to be able to put the animation on the character that we're using. So, click biped, come over here to character, we're going to do rename, and I'm going to do magic 
underscore attack underscore anim. Great! Look at that! We're getting better already! So I'm going to highlight that entire thing, come over to our groups, and then hit create. I'm going to do magic underscore attack underscore anim. Okay, cool. So now, um, if I don't want to see this animation, I'm just going to turn that off. Also, another thing to realize is that um, if you don't want to see, like, any of the skeletons, um, or if you just want to, like, hide the, the joints a little bit, you're going to want to press Control a Look at that. Now, the mesh is the one that's on top of everything, and the joints are under it. Or if you just want to turn it off, you hit it one more time. Or if you want to see everything again, and you want the skeletons to be on top, you hit it again. You hit Control a So, so far, this is Control w This is Control... No, wait. This is Control uh, w again. Control a Control a Control a Vundabar, wonderful, blah blah blah. So now I'm gonna I want to put this animation on here, it, and also you can see that in here our take is mixamo.com. I don't really like that. I'm gonna rename that. So I'm gonna come down here to takes, and rename this to magic underscore attack underscore anim. Wonderful! Look at this. Haha! -ha. Now, our take is magic underscore attack underscore anim. Which is exactly what's, what we want. So, right here. So, if if you look at... If you come over here to characters, and you double click on the wizard rig, um, you have your character settings. Now, this is what you're going to use for retargeting. And this is very, 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 very important. Um, and there's a lot of different options. Even I need to kind of jump into this a bit more. But you can see that uh, you can come in here and like you can hit this retargeting and match source. Th so I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is um, instead of stance, if you want the animation to be connected to the character, here I'll turn on the joints again, you're going to hit the stance imp input type you're gonna hit character and then you can kinda see as soon as I hit active and I hit play ooh ooh man this is a little broken look at how broken that is yikes <laughs> well maybe not active source no wait my bad. So once you hit character and then you put input source, then you're going to hit match source. Let's see if that helped any. <laughs> wow, that really didn't. Um, okay, so what you can kind of see here is that um, the animation really needs to be at T pose before you can really do anything else. It's, it's super important. Um, I'm almost happy that this happened because that's that's a really good example of what not to do. <laughs> so how about we uh, let's actually just go into Maya really quick. Let's adjust this in Maya. And if you don't have Maya, um, then I'm sure um, I'm sh sure with Motion Builder you can kind of do the same thing using the Properties window. So let's uh let's do that i'm gonna open a new scene over here and i'm gonna drag this here so all right so maya um i'm going to go to tutorial and so okay so this is an FBX, and I'm going to add, yeah, we're just going to add animation, and you have to make sure that this animation is checked. 
Okay. All right. See, we got our we got our animation, which is wonderful. So, what I'm going to do to fix this issue is I'm going to go back to negative one frames over here. Um, the reason why I do that is because I want to make sure that this character is T posed up uh, for the animation to sync up with. It's really, really super important that uh, your character is set at T pose before, uh, or at the, your character is set at the T pose, and also your animation is set at T pose, just so Motion Builder can combine both of um, the animations together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, this, you know, main head joint, and then I'm going to do Mel script wise select dash hi. Um, you can see up here I made it a, uh, a, a a custom tool. It's just really really stinking helpful because it grabs the entire hierarchy of of your character. So with that what I can do now is I'm going to open the channel box um, editor and I'm going to zero out my rotations. Aha! You see that mess? That's good. <laughs> we want um, we want our character to uh, be at T-pose, and this is exactly uh, what we need on the first frame. So I'm going to um, select all of this and hit S to key um, to key that frame of animation. So when you import it in. Um, the first frame is going to be a T-pose, which is awesome. doesn't really matter that it's negative one, and plus, when you typically uh, have something in a studio, you're not going to want it uh, to be negative one in the first place. You'll most likely start at zero or one, so on the timeline. So, all right, cool. Uh, you can make stuff in T-pose. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... Now, what I want to do is um, I want to send it back to uh, I want to send it back to Motion Builder, and I th think that my best option is to actually delete a lot of this stuff. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete that mess. We're going to delete the character. Yes to all, because we don't need it. We don't need it anymore. It's fine. And look, now it's gone. Ah, <sighs> the poor death of magic a attack anim. Oh well. Okay. So, um, now now we're going to send this to Motion Builder. But Nick, how how do you do that with Maya? Well, it's easy. You go to File, and look at that. What Autodesk is so super nice that they actually. Um, allow you to send um, things to and from uh, Motion Builder to Maya. Now they don't take everything, but still. So in this case, eh, it doesn't look like it's connected to Maya. So I'm probably just gonna have to re-do uh, some of my setup. So and it won't take very long. You'll most likely be doing this a couple times yourself when you uh, are are getting used to Motion Builder and working between Maya and Motion Builder. So all right. I'm going to send this new scene. And yes, I want to send the entire scene. Wee. Oh boy. Okay. Now nah, we don't have to save changes. Okay. So look at that. Now our animation starts at T pose and uh yeah, it's exactly what we need. So, you're also probably wondering, but Nick, it needs a namespace. Well, you've been paying attention, my good sir or madam. So, I'm going to hit Control w and I'm going to select the entirety of our joint nodes. I'm going to right-click on here, and I'm going to hit Add Renew and slash Remove Namespaces. So, I'm just going to do um, Madg and I'm just to make things faster <laughs> and I'm going to hit apply to branch and when I do that 
Oof. Oh, oof. Oof, oof, oof. That's not what I want. Okay. You know what? Let's let's see if this actually works. If I apply this here, I hit characterize and I hit biped. Character. Definition. Okay, cool. Never mind. Um <laughs> when you first bring this in, you're not really gonna have um this entire name here. That was just something Maya did. So just refer to the beginning of this video when uh when importing or merging um, animations. So, okay, you're probably wondering, Nick, what did you just do over here? Now, this is human IK. This is seen in Maya, and honestly kind of sucks in Maya. It works fantastic in Emotion Builder. And um, friend at work, Casey, um, has converted me from using human IK in Maya to human IK in Emotion Builder because it's so much better. Um, so, yeah, so... What is human IK? Human IK is mainly used for syncing up animation. It's primarily what Motion Builder is used for, and it's honestly uh, the first place it was. Hum Motion Builder is probably the first place that this was used. So, all right, and you can see right here, um, you have this character with all this green uh, joints on him. Now, when you characterize um like your animation you are defining your character and when you define your character you're mainly just plotting um the the character to this outline so let's say okay i'm going to delete this delete it anyways yes to all okay and now we don't have any character anymore which is sad. So I want to change that back, and I'm going to apply that to here. And hit biped, and now um, if I go over to character, then you can see that you know everything is applied. Um, the the other thing, um, just a tip to other character riggers out there: if you want to use any like extra arm rolls, this is such a great tool to use. I'm I'm just now kind of like looking at this um, and that's super nice they have it for the the legs the left up and also if you're writing any scripts um, they uh, the really nice thing is is you know if you just scroll over um, a definition um, or like a uh, a symbol on here uh, for the joint it'll actually just tell you exactly like what the um, what the human IK is expecting, um, because if if you name things uh, exactly how it how Motion Builder expects it, then um, you'll be pretty set because it won't recognize some of the joints if they're not named a certain way. So yeah, that's a lot of words, um, and that's for my rigging friends. So there you go, bada bing. So um, I'm gonna. Uh, rename this to madge underscore anim Na and remember I use groups so we're going to select this entire thing and hit create and I'm going to do um, madge underscore anim it doesn't really matter what you send in first just as long as you're consistent with what you're doing and Let's see. So this is take one. I don't want I don't want this take to be called take one, so I'm gonna come over into the navigator window, go over to takes, and I'm going to rename this take to madge underscore anim. I'll actually call that take. Cool. So now you have a proper animation that's that's characterized and um is in T-Pose, and yeah, so let's get the character in here. Now, I'm going to hit Merge, I'm going to get Pellegrini in here, that's such a silly name, um, and remember, we can unclick these, because we're not going to use any of these takes, and remember to apply your namespace, and um, 
I'm going to do wizard rig. I'm going to merge it. And look at that. Bam. See? See how see how important uh that setup is? Now he's a little off. That's probably just because of uh translation in, in his hips and we didn't zero that out, but I'm not really too worried about that for this demonstration. You just gotta make sure that these kind of line up one to one. Um and I think I just missed a step in the Mixamo uh, process. Um, I know if you're using Xsends, um, there is an export settings that allows you to export uh, e every single uh, motion, mo motion capture animation that you export with T-Pose at the beginning. So just remember that if, if you're using the Xsends software. So, all right. So now we have this setup. This is exactly what we freaking need. I'm really excited for you guys and for me because I can apply some cool animation on this dude. So I'm going to, uh, at least for right now, uh, do my regular setup. I'm going to go over to this groups tab. I'm going to hit create and I'm going to do wizard underscore rig. So now, like I said, if you want to turn that off, you got that. If you want to turn that off and on, then you got that. Um, Photoshop like, layer editor like, group like. Okay. Um, so now, um, what I'm going to do to actually get the animation on here is I'm going to go to input type. I'm going to hit character. I'm going to hit care. Oh wait. Oh. We haven't characterized this person yet. I'm silly. My bad. So, um, <coughs> I'm going to click and drag uh, this character asset on onto here. Now, to just go into this one more time, you go into templates, you go, you select characters, and then you have all these different presets. You're going to want to click this character and l left click it and drag it over to this joint node. You'll hit characterize, biped, and now um, you'll come over here and you can rename this to whatever you'd like. So and you can see it's all def it's all defined. And um, you can you can change your, your character um, or or your source here. I mainly like using the character settings over here since you have a lot more to mess around with. Um, so I'm going to hit character, active, and I'm going to hit control W and come back here. So um, now you can see if we hit play, yeah, yeah, did you see that mess? That's some nice, woo, dude, he's a, uh, he's Goku wizard. Hmm. Should change his name to Goku. Okay. So, so that that's wonderful, right? That's that's great. Now, if you want to make things a bit more precise, um, you can actually use this uh, this tab down here. Now, I'm gonna hit match source. Let's see if that actually did anything. Match source actually like brings the the joints closer to. Uh, its materials. So that's eh, probably a bit more consistent or, or concise with how the the animation is. Um, motion reduction, offsets, actors. So um, this is just, just mainly something to mess around with. Um, you can mainly use th there's a butt ton of different offsets here. Let me let me scroll this up. Um, now, and these are something that you might just have to Google because I don't really have a whole lot of time to, to get into this. Um, and maybe this will be like an, another future video once I kind of do more uh, research myself. But these are mainly used for like if, if you're streaming animation um, from one software to another. So like I use Xsense a lot. If you're streaming from Xsense to um, Motion Builder, uh, you, you're gonna have people that 
aren't necessarily the size of the character that you're using. So that's that's mainly why you would use a lot of these different offset tools. Um, so that'll be like a a video for a different time. I I don't really want to you know jump into that as much, just because that's that's a lot of different work. Um, so all right. So cool. Well, um, Goku wizard. Okay, so cool. Look at him. He's a wizard. Press Control A to put the joints um, behind the character. Press Control A to get rid of the joints. Right. So cool. Let's say you know we want to put in um, another animation onto the scene. Um, just in case, I'm gonna check to see if uh, this character animation that I'm about to put in um, is T-Post. So it might not be. So I'm going to import import the sucker in. Make sure that this is set to FBX. Um I'm going to do walking and I'm I'm going to make sure that this is add animation. And typically at work for um what we use there's a certain type of FBX um setting that you can change here. We typically use the 2011 version of um, of the FBX exporter, but I don't think it really matters. So I'm not going to worry about it. And you shouldn't either. Maybe. <laughs> don't worry about it right now. Okay, so we're going to import this character in to Maya. Yeah, yeah. We need to. We need to get. We need to set uh, this character's T pose. So okay, I'm gonna select the hierarchy, and I'm going to make sure that I'm on negative one. I'm going to zero out um, my rotation, and uh, I'm going to select everything here uh, in the channel box and hit S. So now. We actually have. Okay, great. Um, we actually have our animation set up properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, great. Look at this. So if you look here, um, you can see that Maya is still connected to the Motion Builder, which is awesome. So, and it's exactly what we need. Um, oh. I'm taking it that when you um, grab something that's an animation from Mixamo, they automatically add this uh, prefix of what the animation's called. It doesn't really matter all that much, but if you're working with XNs or any other kind of uh, mocap data, they will most likely not have this walking underscore hips. and I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm just letting you know that namespaces are freaking important and you should be using them um, whenever you bring stuff into Motion Builder. So, I'm, but in this case, since this already has uh, something bef before, you know, all of these, these joints, then we won't really have to worry about putting a namespace before it. It just, just, Make sure that you double check that. So, all right, enough of my blabbering. Let's add this to the current scene. Yes, I want to add this to the current scene. Now, okay. So, you can see that um, we have another skeleton in here, which is wonderful, and. I don't really want to see the uh, the first animation that, that we did, so I'm going to turn that off. Look at that. See, that's why groups are great. 
follow my instructions, kids. So next, we're going to go over to Asset Browser and we're going to drag and drop the character onto uh, one of the joint nodes. Now I'm going to hit Characterize, I'm going to hit Biped, and I'm going to come down to Character, and I'm going to rename this to walk underscore anim copy and I'm also going to select this and all these nodes um, and to de deselect groups on here you just select them again um, you can't like click over here uh, I, I'm sure that when you first made this you were like oh, I just want to click off of here but no you just click on there. So, okay, so we'll select that, create your group, and then we'll do walk anim. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, okay. And we have a corgi in the background. Um, okay. So, um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is, I, I like renaming my takes um, just so that that we have it. So, okay, so we're going to rename this walk anim take. Okay, great. And, you know, the one thing to also notice is when this comes in, when a new animation comes in, it is always uh, called take one. And if I haven't just uh, explained it already, this right here is where you will switch your uh, different takes. All right, this is the start of your animation here, and you can uh, double click that and change that there. This is your the end of your animation. You can double click and change, you know, where your animation, where your timeline starts and ends. Um, this scrolls through the animation, and um, this just like allows you uh, these are like pins I guess and they allow you to zoom in to different frames on your animation so <clears throat> yeah so so now I have the ability to you know rename this lock in him take wonderful so now if I come over to wizard um, and I want to uh, apply this on the walk animation you have to make sure that both this take um, is set here and um, you have the walk anim set here now when I press play, check out what happens. Sick, right? He's strutting, that strutting boy. Ooh, ooh, look at him go. Oh, that's just that's just beautiful. I am so happy. He's he's just going to go on the catwalk and just kill it. I mean, look at him. He's already dressed for success. Now, <laughs> that's all great and all, but what if I want to change it back to the other animation? Um. Well, duh, you just hit this, right? Wrong. Okay, remember what I said last time. You have to make sure uh, if if you want to change uh, the animation um, to a different take, you have to make sure that your input source and your take up here are the same. Um, so now, if we come over here, um, the animation is totally different. And you'll see that our original character, um, our original character, uh, ROC, but our, um, th the first animation we brought in is not moving. And that's because it's not set on a certain take. Now, Nick, let's be honest. I want this character to have that awesome mm, walk animation on it. I don't want no Goku wizards. I want my sassy strutting wizards. And you know what? I would agree. So, if you want to make that permanent, and I mean permanent, 
<laughs> um, you can um, you can plot or you can plot the character or bake animation onto the character. Now, um, how we do that is you just hit plot. Now, you have to make sure that um, before you plot in anything uh, that you follow all the steps beforehand and you <laughs> have an animation that you like. Now you can always come back and replot your characters because it's um, with other animations because it's uh, going to be used in story mode. And I'll get into story mode in just a minute. It's actually the next thing we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to hit plot character and you have two options here. You can do skeleton or you can do control rigs. Now this right here, I don't know when this started looking like this, but if you have a control rig, um, which you're most likely going to be used for like cleaning up animation, um, then that'll all be set up right here. I can even show you what, what it looks like on the character in, in just a second. But all right, but we just want to um, bake the animation um, onto the skeleton. Uh, and when it says skeleton, it means directly onto the original character's uh, skeleton that's bound to the to the character's mesh. So I'm gonna hit skeleton, and I typically put it on gimbal lock. Um, I don't really need anything else, and make sure that your uh, frame rate is set correctly. And boom, man. That was so fast. Typically, there's a loading bar like right here, um, but now uh, you can see that the character is wizard rig and the source is none. So that just means that the animation's on there forever. Yay! So what can we do with that? That's the real question. What can we do with this? Why? Why even plot it? Like that's silly. If we're if we're not in an evil, you know. Uh, conniving scheme where we plot stuff well that's all motion builder is it's just a place where you plot stuff all the time and then you tell a story so now we're in this uh, we're in story mode haha -ha. um, and story mode is mainly for um, at for for like adding uh, different animations onto uh, different animation layers and so um, going into here uh, you're going to we're going to add a tab uh, to put our animation in um, or uh, a layer so I'm going to right click I'm going to hit insert and um, I'm going to do character animation track since uh, this is uh, this character has a pretty standard uh, excuse me rig attached to it and I'm going to hit wizard underscore rig now what I can do is I can right click and insert current take and so this is exactly what you want to see the merge animation for multiple layers will be inserted well I mean you have these animation layers which is pretty close to to Maya's um, but we didn't really edit anything so don't really worry about it all that much <laughs> uh, excuse me so um, looking at this uh, this is this is actually a clip of our animation. If we want to, let's say, add more, and just keep the walk, you know, cycling, then then we can like copy and paste it. I don't know why it's not going. Oh, it's because here I'm gonna add like a thousand frames onto here, and yeah, see. See now you can you can uh, add multiple uh, you know, animations. You can go into here. Um, should be able to like expand it. Yeah, expand. Yeah, and eh, it's a different tutorial video. Don't worry about it. But anyways, so, so it's. It's mainly, um, this is great for just editing like clips together. 
And so let's say, you know, you didn't just want the walk anymore. You were like, you, you had a change of heart. You wanted to make sure that Goku Wizard ha also, like, had this fancy walk to him, you know? Like, you wanted both. And you know what? I don't disagree with you. I want both of them on there, too. So, uh, what you would do is you would just plot uh, the animation of the other take onto the character. So, how about we do that? Let's set this back to negative one. I'm going to change this back to uh, mag and m take. And here, I'm going to double check. Okay. The reason why I'm double checking this is because I extended the frames out to 100. And. Um, <coughs> oh, wait, hold on. Let me switch this on to active. So, okay, let me let me back up. So you're going to change the take to this. You're going to hit character, um, match, or like you know whatever your other animation is. You'll you'll hit active, and it overrides the current uh, baked uh, or plotted animation that you have on the character. So now, if we look. See, now he has his animation on there, and that's exactly what, what we want. And it looks like... This is supposed to be 100 frames. So, Vundabar. Uh, the one thing I was going to talk about earlier is, if you have, if you have this extended out, um, you just, just make sure that you know what your last frame is. Um, because when you bake something that has more uh, frames... Um, if you bake something um, with a timeline that uh, is extended out um, longer than uh, how long your animation is, it will bake uh, those empty... Motion Builder will bake those empty uh, animation frames, and you'll just have something just still like this. And you don't want that. I mean, you can deal with it and, you know, back it up, but it just that's just extra time that you don't want to spend on, on animation. So I'm going to plot... Um, this animation onto the character. We'll hit skeleton. Make sure it's on gimbal killer always. Kill that gimbal. <clears throat> and then um, I'm going to plot it. Okay, cool. So, so look at that. So if I turn story mode off, and this, this turns story mode off and on, I'm going to turn that off, and you can see that now the animation's actually on this character. If I turn it on, you still have that nice little uh, walking animation, and um, that that's just because now the baked animation with story mode off is going to be on the main character rig now, and not um, what we and not the the walk that we had on there originally. That's on there because the story mode's turned on. So. If we go over here to story, now I want to add this to our character. So I'm going to put this starting animation right here, and I'm going to right click and insert current take. Okay, that didn't do, <laughs> my original plan didn't do anything, but mainly um, you're going to want to drag this out here. So. Now you can see, not sure why it's lagging, but now you can see you have both animations on here. Now Nick, you're probably wondering, I want these animations to merge, man, like, dang, can you give me that? And I'll, I'll be like, aw, yeah. So you can actually push these animations over each other to make them overlap. So let's let's see what happens if, if you do that. So because they're not like still or like standing in the same place um like they don't really <laughs> they don't really merge together uh properly as as you would probably want them to um but if if uh the character was like walking in place and also doing the attack in place then the transition would probably be a lot better I just really want to see this guy walk really silly and then also do a Kamehameha.
So, I mean, I kind of got my wish, but I don't know exactly what you guys wanted. You guys are getting a tutorial, so just just be just be happy, man. Um, world's a good place. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to rename this um, to body. And so, um, let's say I wanted my monstrosity of animation to be on the character for all time. Um, well, you're in luck. Because if you uh, right-click onto here, um, you can plot whole scene to current take. And that's going to bake all the animation you have on here onto the character. So now, if I turn story mode off, you'll see that the character um, is the wizard rig and the source animation doesn't have any animation on it at all. So, now you have... You have a uh, sassy Goku Kamehameha wizard. Yay. Uh, we combine two animations together. Isn't that awesome? Uh, so another thing I kind of want to touch on, because um, I, I, th I think I'm getting kind of close to uh, finishing this up, but um, y if you have any facial animation on the character, uh, any baked animation onto the geometry, you would go in and you would do insert generic animation track. Now, what the heck is the difference between generic animation track and character animation track? I'm glad you asked, whoever you are. So, the generic animation track basically takes baked animation that's on the applied uh, geometry. Um, or, it's... Uh, or it can also be used f for um, getting animations from like different body parts. So you know, if if you mainly le okay, let's let's actually jump into this. Um, if if you mainly wanted to uh, just get the animation, like let's say from the fingers, like because you would, I don't know, maybe be uh, recording animation on just the fingers. Well, you would open um, you you would click these three buttons here, go into the scene. Like I said, this is exactly like the outliner in Maya, if you're familiar uh, with Maya. Um, you're going to go into your um, your wizard rig. I don't know why this is split up like this so much. That's weird. Um, spine. Select it to here. Okay. Yeah. So this is exactly what I'm kind of looking for. Um, and so, let's say I mainly just wanted to grab all the animation of uh, these fingers. Um, so, I'd mainly just click this. Because um, we had to do some of those. Um, click this. And then you would insert current take. I mean, in in this example, like you would probably have another rig that that has uh, finger animation on it, or if you if you have like um, animation that's that's on the uh, the geo. Um, or the mesh of the face that's baked on there. Like let's let's say you have um, blend shapes on the face that are already on there that you want to uh, keep. It's, uh, you would mainly go into here um, in your navigator, um, which that's where your your three dots takes you to, and then you would. Let's see. Where the heck are the... Where's the geometry in here? Kind of weird that that's not here. Um, hips, da 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 Hmm. Body. I think that's actually it. Okay, yeah. So, so I would just, you know, hit this 
body actually yeah this is it so so if i if i wanted to you know keep the baked animation um of the blend shapes um for this face i would select the uh the body that has the baked animation on it um or the blend shape values on it and i would select it in here and um do insert current take so yeah and then you know if if you wanted to uh plot it onto your character then you would select you would do right click insert or plot whole scene to current take and the same thing uh for here let's see um oh yeah okay one last thing i wanted to touch on and then i i think i'm going to call it so so the next thing i would say to do is if you're if you're looking at this and if you want to clean up the animation on on the character let's say you know you you didn't really want to see you know the character kind of like looking looking like this um it's really weird how he slides away you more want him over here would um so the next thing that you would probably do is you'd probably um actually bake this animation onto a control rig. So actually let's let's do that. So you'll come over here this blue button right here. You'll go down to plot and then you'll see bake plot to to skeleton or control rig. So I'm gonna hit control rig. Now I like using FK IK. Um you can use IK only, it doesn't really matter, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna do what I'm used to. So um also if you're hearing that bell in the background uh that's my dope mom watching uh breaking bad so yeah yeah proud of her anyways <laughs> uh so yeah let's let's say you know um you got this animation going you want to edit it and as soon as you get this you're going to have these animation layers these are really really important uh for cleaning a lot of this stuff up uh, you have your base animation, which is um, what you are like, which is the animation that's already uh, on here. So one thing to also realize is, um, I don't know, it might might actually be good to uh, give yourself two planes, and um, so you go to view, view layer, two planes, and then you hit Control W over here, or you can do it for the other uh, side of the screen. It doesn't really matter. Um, but here you can see that this pops up as soon as you make a control rig. Um, and these are all the different parts of your, um, of like your FK controls. Because your FK controls are, are essentially, um, like these yellow joints here. Um, your IK, so FK is, is for kinematics. And IK is inverse kinematics. Um, you can Google that one, but uh, that's just they're just standard um, uh, different rig rig se rigging setups um, that you can make on characters to um, to move and manipulate the body. But definitely look up a tutorial video on that because I'm not really going to go into uh, detail on that. So just a heads up. So okay, let's say I don't really like where this arm is, um, and I want to move it. So I'm um, I'm going to first make an animation layer, and um, I want this to be super clean. So typically, when I make animation layers, I make a layer for each body part that I'm uh, adjusting. So I'm going to rename this, call this wrist. Uh, Fix. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to call it wrist fix. So, first, we're going to go into properties. Now, I'm going to actually make the single plane because that's all we really need. And um, I'm going to look here. So, let's say, let let's say I'm weird. I actually like that. Like, 
let's say like I actually like that slide back and I want this to have a bit more of a follow through um, in its animation so the the main deal is when you're trying to fix animation um, <laughs> the one thing that's really tough is uh, you gotta make sure that uh, your your keys that you like stay the same um, and you do that by having a first pose um, that you want to keep and then an ending pose uh, that you also want to keep and then you'll have this middle transition uh, to figure out how to clean up the animation so when you clean stuff up um, you're going to want to um, hit translation um, if you want to rotate it then you can uh, key this rotate uh, this over here um, I might have jumped a little bit this is the properties window now whenever you click on something um, it will actually sh like show you like what you can and cannot key it's mainly just a place where you can key stuff um, so I'm keying the translation and rotation here if you want to be a bit more precise then you can um, you know, click that down but I'm not really worried about that now blends um, IK blend is essentially um, applying weight or more control to uh, the um, the effector uh, that's affecting the animation and and that's that's what that's what this is this is an uh, IK uh, wrist effector you can kind of see that it's that's called that right there uh, Maya has this too but it's it's better to clean up um, your stuff with the control rig in here because Maya's is meh it doesn't really give you a whole lot of uh, as many options as it does within a motion builder so let's just keep in mind so um so let's see um mainly i make sure let's see i'm gonna go a couple of frames back before my first pose because this is this is the first pose i want to keep but i also want to make sure that um my blend is turned all the way up of this actually wait i'm i'm jumping ahead so let's let's back up first uh, get your first um, pose that you like and the last pose that you like uh, for a body part so I like this last pose I think it's cool um, and it's exactly what I want so I'm going to key that there uh, and there and I don't like where that is right there so I'm also gonna go back a couple of frames and I'm going to key this I'm going to key the translation the, the rotation and then I'm going to key um, this IK blend and IK blend uh, T and R um, at zero and that's just saying hey uh, this doesn't have any kind of um, weight or control over the effector so if I go over here actually I'm going to do the same uh, at the end here. So I'm going to key the translation rotation, do blend here, here, and then over here I'm going to turn up um, the blend all the way up. I'm going to do the same over here. Okay, so now so now you have animation on on this keyframe um, before our our major key that we like and uh, the end key that we also like and it's saying hey don't put uh, with these IK blends it's like hey don't put any more uh, weight or give any more control to uh, uh, to this wrist effector now all throughout here um, the blend is at a hundred uh, so I can key this wherever and it's gonna blend the animation um, with how I want it so I'm just gonna 
you know, <laughs> move this up here, and maybe I want them to rotate a little bit, and I'm going to key that. So let's let's look, let's see how that looks. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's I think that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. You can't grab my wrist today. Okay, so, so yeah, look at that. So you can see. You select this effector again. Um, we have a key that doesn't really have any um animate animation manipulated with it. Uh, there's no weight applied to that part of the um the effector. We come over here. Uh, the weight or control is given um, with the IK blend. You go further. This is the frame where I adjusted the animation, and you can do more. I'm just going to do that one frame. Um, this is the end of the animation with uh, still the IK blend on, and then I turned it straight off right after that. Now you could probably just turn it off here, but like it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So, okay, cool. See, and you have you have that like nice you know, transition. Um Yeah, what if I did want to like push that back a little bit then? So, yeah, you you can see that this um this actually like um, is blend it's it's blending um, between the animations and you're also able to just clean up uh, animation how you see fit um, so yeah that's cool um, another thing is if if you go into here into uh, f curves this is actually where you're gonna see like the majority of um, your animation this is basically the graph editor um, it's a little more sticky in the fact that, uh, like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, like, press things or, like, manipulate things on here sometimes, but that's fine. Um, I want to show you what this looks like. Okay. Um, so if you, if you look at this, because it looks like all of our animation for this, um, for this shoulder, or as they call it, left arm in here. Um, like this is our base animation. This is this is what's primarily on here. If you're wanting to like extend the animation or or do anything like that, um, you have this. You actually have this like enable time warp display, um, which is nice. Um, I'm not really gonna go into that, but uh, that's something to to look into. Um, if you're wanting to kind of stretch out the animation or or uh, shrink the animation to um, make it shorter um, I would use the naval time warp display that's that's what I found that that works um, over here if you have any blend shapes or, or any kinds of values you will see it over uh, on this side of the screen um, I'm trying to think what else Oh, um, let's see. Well, I guess it's not coming up. Well, alrighty. So, so overall, that's that's kind of my little short take on Motion Builder. It's it's r a really great tool for uh, putting animations together. And sending it to and from Maya, uh, you can send it to and from Unity. I think Unreal, um, and this entire piece of software is not really used for you know putting materials on, paint weighting, um, and the the software does if does not take like every single little thing. Uh, so if, like, let's say 
you are trying to make a a, a cache or uh, do a simulation on your skin, Motion Builder is not going to take that. It just doesn't. Um, and because uh, it's it's not it's not as sophisticated as as Maya in terms of like putting Sims on it, but it is suffice sophisticated in its uh realm of retargeting. So if you want to look more into that, Google that, maybe that'll be something, you know, uh I make a video on later down the line once I have a bit more time. But yeah, th this is basically the the main s setup um to um to using Motion Builder and if you watched all of this, I really appreciate it. I hope it helps. And if you have any more questions, leave a comment or send me an email or and stuff. Feel free to check out my my website and my Twitter at Nick Harvey or not Nick Harvey, but um, Nick Pick One Fifty. It's cool. So yeah, this is my little improv motion builder session. I hope you all enjoyed and you learned something. Goodbye!